That has to be lucky money in some way. So they started heads up play at hand 150. This is hand 181 of the final table. Did you lose some money on that over under of 100 hands uh, against the Mickey? I took the over. We took the over. Well. Oh, yeah. I'm, as I said, I'm a pessimist, so I'm always going to predict that I'm going to be here for yeah, a very Mickey, long time. Mickey took a hun under 100 for the final table? He well, set the line at 100. Wow. That's free money. I think Mickey's still feeling guilty about the fact that he made me commentate for six and a half hours on his heads up battle in Copenhagen. And he tried to give it to me for saying that this is more interesting. <laughs> and when you raise pre, you're most of the time going to put in a little seabed here. About half pot is pretty standard. Excuse me, this was a 3-bet pot and then checked the button. I thought Chen Button raised and Katai defended. I don't think there was a 3-bet pre. Oh, that's my mistake then. I was just looking at the strength of Katai's hand and I was like... And looking at the pot size, but I just miscalculated. But it's a pretty strong hand to 3-bet there, pre, but he didn't, so now we're on the turn. But he... Uh, takes off a, a street with just ace high, which is likely to be good there on uh, most of the time. Isn't it going to bring him into a lot of tough spots because Chen is, is known to be only, keep firing? Only if Chen barrels again there, and that's that's kind of a tough spot, uh, a tough card at least. The nine of spades in the turn to keep barreling, uh, it hits a lot of his range in terms of uh, straights and making pairs of nines. And he's never folding a jack, for example. And now it looks like he's deciding to bluff with his ace because there's a four card straight on the board. He figures Chen has some sort of piece of that, you know, like maybe has like a seven or a nine or a ten at this point. Yeah, because it would make sense for Chen to check back short on value on the turn. Right. On the turn, you generally check back um, your uh, medium strength hands and fire your weak and your strong hands. However, he had a really weak hand basically shut down on the turn. Isn't it also likely for Chen to call down here with a seven if he would have one, even though there's a there's a very good I think it's chance. a real tough call at the seven. I think that I mean that's what this bet is designed to take down, like a seven or a nine in this spot. Um, I mean, how do you call here with a seven? I mean, you got to put Katai on a total random just ace high kind of float like he has, and I mean that's all you're really beating at this point. I think this would definitely blow uh, Chen off the seven, but he's thinking about raising, obviously. We've seen him done done that before. Yeah, make that huge all-in bluff with ace high. And whatever raise he decides to make here, if he does in fact raise, is going to work. A reminder of chip denominations. Blues are five, yellows 25, green and blacks 100,000 each. So those are raising chips. This is really big. I mean, it's probably raised to about 1.2 1, 1 or so, which is basically a click back here, a min raise, because there's no reason to bet more. He's a, uh, because Katai e either has a straight here or he has nothing, and in any regards, if he has nothing, if he doesn't have the straight, he can't call any raise. It's actually just over 1.5 million. Um, this is a really big raise. I don't know why he raised it so much. I think he, he can accomplish the same by making it 1.2 or 1.3 million. is chewing the t-shirt for comfort. Obviously Chen is just so polarized here. He either has an 8 or better, which would be like an 8 queen, um, or he has nothing. There's nothing in between here. That thing's going to be covered in drool by the end of this heads up back. Up. Could it be a factor that the race size is a little bit bigger because then it's even less likely for Kitai to to think about even rebluffing? Right, no, he can't rebluff here. Not in this. It's just, it would be the most ridiculous reship ever, or yeah, but I'm just saying that if he would have clicked back... Right, he'd be more... I mean, that, that's that's why he's doing it. Uh, but I think in, in either case, he'd be hard-pressed to uh, to continue here without an 8. I don't know. I'm surprised he's even thinking. I, I think he's just Hollywooding here. He can't He can't continue here. No way. This this is this is pretty sick if he, if he does choose to continue and, and put it in another race. 
What if he hero calls and they tie? It's, I mean, it, it would be weird because, I mean, his line on the hand is he's, he's bluffing and then he gets raised and now he kind of likes his hand uh, because he knows that Chen's hand strength is so polarized. He's thinking either Chen has an eight and a beat or my ace high is good here. So it doesn't make any sense for him to put in another raise because his ace high is good or Chen's calling him off if he puts in another raise. So he's, he's, he's thinking about calling or folding at this point. Putting in another raise would make absolutely no sense at all. would be a fantastic call when you take a line to uh, to bluff the river and end up calling the raise for value. Hey, you think he's bluffing the river. Maybe he always thought ace high was good and it was a value bet. <laughs> he's paying to induce. Yeah. Uh. Do you think it's smart to get involved in this kind of leveling game in this stage of the heads up? Uh. I usually don't go this deep into it uh, and this many raises back and forth on the river as a bluff. I mean, wow. <laughs> wow. That is the call of the day. That is, that, wow. th that's just fantastic, fantastic call. He must have some sick read on, on Andrew Chen right now. That's that, insane. Wow. I mean, he, he definitely bet the river as a bluff, but once he got raised, he's thinking, wow, now my ace is good. <laughs> that is sick. Well, there you have it, a highlight reel yeah. hand for the EBT season.